Welcome to the next lesson of our Vision OS course. And in this section of the course, we are still building our to-do list app, which is just a simple 2D SwiftUI app that you might have already built for iOS or macOS. We're just building one for Vision OS to get familiar with how the UI components work and how they behave on this new platform. In the future sections, we will then build some more native um, Vision OS apps with multiple windows, with ornaments, and so on. We will explore all of that stuff. But for now, let's continue working on the to-do list app. And this is where we left off in the last lesson. So we created our to-do list view, which is basically the detail view. So uh, we have a navigation split view. And let me actually start the simulator in the background so we can have a look at uh, all of that in a second. So in our navigation split view, we have a list of our to-do lists. We have a button. Uh, through which a user can select one to-do list and those selected to-do lists are then shown in our detail uh, panel on the right hand side. Right now that's just a list over all of the to-do items in that to-do list and just showing the title of the item. Uh, I believe we can now switch to the simulator and have a look on there. So <laughs> as always I'll have to zoom in a bit. So we have our to-do lists application running here. We have a button showing an alert to create a new list. Let's hit create there. Then we can select that list and we can see the details over here and we can create a uh, first to-do item in there, hit create, and that will be shown in our list in the detail panel over here. So today we want to enable the user to toggle whether this to-do is done or not. And we also want to improve this detail view here a bit to make it look a bit nicer. So for that, we will get started by changing up how this list works here. So we will um, get rid of the, or we will embed the text in an H stack. So basically, I want to create the same layout that the Reminders app has. So we want to have a circle on the leading side, then the title of the to-do, and then a spacer at the end. So we already have the title in here. So let's add the spacer at the end. How do we want to have that toggle circle thingy in there? So there would be two approaches. You can either use a toggle, but the toggle doesn't really have the right UI for us in this sense. So it's literally a toggle or a button on Vision OS. Both of them are not really what we're looking for. So instead, we will just create our own button. And as the label, we will use SF symbols. And we will change the symbol depending on whether the to do is done or not. So we will say, if the item is done, then we will use the circle.fill SF symbol. And if it's not done, then we will just use the circle as a symbol. This way we automatically adopt the accent color of the user, uh, of like the device accent color, uh, and it will be used to fill the circle. So that should be really nice. So let's have a quick look at that in the simulator. We obviously haven't written any button logic yet, but we can zoom in a bit again. And let me just create a random to-do list in here and a random to-do item in here. And there we have it. We already have the very basic UI. So uh, anywhere in this cell, it is tappable. So we have a hitbox of the entire row. And then we have our um, circle, which is not filled right now because this to-do is not done yet. But this is basically exactly what I had in mind for this and how you probably already know it from the Reminders app. So toggling the is done flag is not that straightforward here since we are using at state. We might uh, also explore using the observation framework on Vision OS, but for now we're staying with the traditional uh, state variables here. Uh, because of that, we cannot just say item dot is done dot toggle because this item here is a let constant in our list. So can't use mutating member on immutable value. Item is a let constant. We cannot do this. So instead we will have to grab this item from our initial list dot items array and in there toggle the value. So what do I mean by that? 
by that I mean that in the end we want to say list dot items at our item index and we will get that in a second dot is done dot toggle so this is the call that we want to make in the end so how do we know this item index here we could go over the indices in the list or use for example the zip function which combines an items index with the item in a tuple um, but both of them are not that nice for um, yeah, view rebuilds and view updates so I actually uh, dislike using zip and dot indices in a list instead I will just grab the index out of the list right here so I will say let item index is list dot items dot first index where dollar zero dot id is the same as our item dot id this will be optional but I will do the cardinal sin and force unwrap this because we, um, this code can only be called if the item actually exists because it's within this um, view builder closure of the list. So um, I cannot imagine any scenario where this would fail to force unwrap and crash your app. Now you could of course be safe and embed this in uh, a um, optional unwrap here through an if let syntax and so now this item index uh, is indeed non-optional this would also work just fine uh, just wanted to show you that I believe this is a place where force unwrapping should be safe but uh, the keyword is should because with force unwrapping you never know how it goes in, in uh, production so let I haven't quite figured out how I can uh, move something towards myself in the vision OS simulator so bear with me as I always have to zoom in again so let me create a list and in there let me create a to do and now we can tap that to do and you will notice that it does switch to the circle dot fill as a symbol which means that the is done flag is actually set to true because that's what we're checking here in order to determine which as of symbol to use. And of course, undoing it also works. Now, if you would imagine we have a list of to do's, so I'll just create a bunch of them in here. And then I toggle one in the middle, just like this. This is not the best user experience as users probably uh, expect all of their done to do's to be at the bottom of the list and all of their not done to do's to be at the top we will actually go one step further and we will refactor this to use two sections so uh, let's change this list here to a for each and embed that for each in a section of let's call this one to do and then embed that section once again in a new list so now we basically have the same items as before, but they're now all in a section called to do. Of course, we don't want to show all items here. We only want to show the items for which $0.isDone is false. So we only want to show the items that are not done yet. And then we can basically copy paste this entire section, paste it down here and instead of to do this one will be called done and we can get rid of this comparison here so now if we run that again in the simulator you or first of all um, I will have to zoom in as always oh, very annoying that simulator doesn't persist that so let's create our list select that and you will notice that we already have our section for to do and our section for done. So we can add a to do one. Let's create that. Add a to do two. Let's create that. We can toggle the to do two and it will be moved to the done section. But as you notice, that was a very harsh transition, no real animation going on in there. So let's also change that. So anytime this um, is done toggle is performed I want to wrap that in a with animation closure so let's also do that up here with animation 
And if we run that again, then we will have a nice animation. And we are slowly zooming further <laughs> into the scene here. So let me move out a bit and try to grab the window so it gets a bit bigger again. All right, that should be good. Let me move it up a bit. Ah, no, it's small again. So annoying to work with the simulator. So let's create our list. And let's add a to do one, create, and let's add a to do two, hit create. And now if we toggle it to do two, you will notice that it smoothly animates from one list section to another. And of course the SF symbol fills. And there is also some auditory feedback. So there is a small click or a very low noise click sound in there. And you probably don't hear that in the recording, but you can try this out for yourself. Now you might have noticed that every single time we open the app, we have to create a new list and new to do's. This is super annoying. We're not using persistence right now as Swift data doesn't work on Vision OS yet. But of course we will update this app to use Swift data once that is supported through the Xcode 15 beta, hopefully in the next version. Right now I'm using version four. Hopefully it will be supported in version five. In the meantime, you can check out my free complete Swift data course, completely free about one hour of content about Swift data for iOS. But once it is supported on Vision OS, it should be the exact same setup. When you're uh, playing around with this app, you could also make sure to always uh, initialize your variables with a few different to-do lists with a few to do. So some preview data in there, you could also do that and save some time debugging and trying out everything.